So a recent website that I did called for two forms. Pretty cool in my opinion. I'm gonna show you one of them in this video. I'll leave a card and a link in the description to the other video. In this video specifically, it was a job application form. So like an employee application form. I'm gonna walk through everything. I'm gonna show you, uh, this is not gonna be a full tutorial, okay? If you're looking for a click by click tutorial, that's not what this is. Uh, the thing is already done. I'm gonna go step by step. I'm gonna give you a ton of information and if you just follow along, you can adapt this to your own situation. Um, but if you're looking for a full click-by-click -click tutorial, I apologize, that's not what this is. Um, but like I said, step-by-step -step showcase of exactly uh, what happened here. And I'm gonna give you the context and there'll be chapters in the, in the, uh, the little timeline. So feel free to skip around. But I just wanna share this with you because I think it's pretty cool. The reasons I'm making this specifically are because this form really helped me specifically help this business that I'm working with, okay? Uh, you know, they needed, they didn't have anything like this before for the job application stuff. We are simplifying the shit out of their process so they don't have to like go back and forth with emails and phone calls and all that sort of stuff. So those are the really th the things that really get me going and forms are one, you know, medium that you can really help a business with. So that's the angle that I'm approaching a lot of this from. Another reason is because I have started using, I had some experience with WS form and I've used it now for the last like six to 12-ish months and I just love it. Like it is amazing. Uh, there has been very little things that I found that it can't do. And then when there is something that's an issue, Mark Westgard, the you know the d lead developer at WS Form, he's always there for it. There's a Facebook group and everything like that. I'm just showing you guys what I use. Okay, if you don't want to use WS Form, that's fine. Maybe you wouldn't be watching this video, but it's what I use. I love it, and I can't say enough about it. The last thing that I'm going to say, and the reason that I'm making this, is because there is currently a 30% uh, off sale on it right now. There'll be an affiliate link in the description. If you use it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, but I'm just, again, sharing you guys, sharing with you guys the things that I use because they make my life a lot easier. You're willing, you're, you're able to, uh, you're free to use them or not use them if you want. So just, just sharing that. And this goes until June 20th. Today is June 15th of 2024. So hopefully you get that deal. If not, sorry for that. Okay. So let me kind of show you a little bit what it is and then we'll go through that whole step-by-step -step thing. So the first thing is, this is kind of our employment application. If you're, you know, this is what you're ultimately be getting to if you follow these steps, you'll have, you know, the, if you think about uh, also like a job application, employee application, it's pretty standardized, right? Like you're gonna get some information from people, maybe you're gonna ask them specific questions, maybe you'll get like a resume, that's what this is, right? There's basic contact info. Again, I'm not going into the weeds because your situation can be a little different than mine, right? But the concepts are what I want you to get down. So these these are all fields. We'll talk about all this stuff, but you can kind of see if a user came in here, they can enter their information. Um, you know when they'll be available, what time type of job um, are they looking for, full time, part time? What's their area of expertise? We'll talk about some of these fields because some of these fields are going to come into play. Certification, so they can like drop down and do all that. Um, if you guys want to leave questions or anything in the comments, and also if you want specific videos on WS Form, like more you know, chunked, like small chunks of like, how do you do this? How do you do that? Let me know. And I will make more content on that as well. Um, but yeah, so then like cover letter and like a resume upload, look, it's got a little drag and drop files to upload. That's, that's dope. Um, okay. So, but this is kind of like your minimum viable product in a sense. If somebody came to you and said, Hey, we want people to be able to apply for a job on our website. That's is, this is probably what you'd give them. You just give them the opportunity to, to put these things in here, right? First name, last name, all that jazz. And then this would go out maybe via an email, maybe it would go to CRM or something, I don't know, it doesn't matter, but this is the minimum viable product. The thing that I wanted to do specifically, uh, again, at a high level is, I wanted to have a situation where if we go to like a careers page on this website here, if we go down to like current openings, we wanted to have a situation where you know, we can put the, the, they're gonna have open jobs, right? It's not just like apply for a random position, there's also gonna be open jobs. So, uh, you know, if it's civil engineer or CAD drafter in this case, again, in your case, whatever it would be, you might be able to go in and click and learn more about that job, right? Again, put yourself in the position of somebody that might be wanting to apply to business. They come in here, they read the information, and then they want to apply directly for this, right? Well, let's click on this. Oh, well, wait a second, wait a second. This is different now right? Because if you look at the URL bars, actually, if we slide this one over, this is our general application right here. You can see how it looks. Notice a couple things like this, this text here, and then the URL where it says just slash apply <clears throat> versus this one here, where now that text is gone 
and it's replaced with something else. And also in the URL bar here, we have this query string rather than just apply. So, but you might be thinking, let's actually take one more step further. There's also a field missing in here. There used to be field, um, what is your expertise, which is down here on this general one? What is your area of expertise? And now it's not in this one. So you might be thinking, right? If you're like kind of like maybe beginner, intermediate in forms and you have like a project, like you might be thinking, Mark, is that two different forms? Like what's going on there? No, the answer is no. And the answer is also, you probably don't really wanna do that because that's gonna be really hard to manage two forms. Like you wanna manage the least amount of stuff possible and make it the most like conditionally dynamic a lot of times would be like kind of the buzzword there because if you manage one thing, you have like one single source of truth or one single like form of truth in this case, right? Then, and you're able, and you have a tool like WS form that can uh, manipulate it given certain conditions then you're golden, okay? So that was all the high level there. Just wanted to kind of give you the, the, the concept there. That's effectively what we're doing. It's not really a super complex uh, technique here and stuff, but I will just explain to you kind of how I got to this point uh, in as much detail as possible. And again, use the chapters if you'd like to skip around for specific things. So I have a list here over on the side off screen that you can't see, but basically this is kind of what I went through. Uh, I'm going to give you the super quick setup because I'm using like Jet, Jet Engine and Crocoblock here. You could be using ACF. It does not matter. WS Form specifically. This video is about WS Form. Uh, so it works with ACF. It works with Jet Engine. Don't quote me on the other ones, but I'm pretty sure that it does work. Just double check. Uh, there's an extensive knowledge base there as well. Those are just the ones I use, Crocoblock and ACF. Um, so yeah, so I'm using Crocoblock in this case specifically. And for this, I created a jobs CPT, right? So you can kind of see like the different types of jobs and everything like that. There are uh, fields associated with these jobs. Again, it might look different if you're using ACF, but it's the same concept, okay? And I'll put a, a, another thing in here, another card up at the top. If you are interested in dynamic data, then I have a, a course, like a free course here, playlist on YouTube. You can go check it out. It's a WordPress dynamic data fundamentals. I would highly recommend doing that. It is an ACF. You can follow along directly with everything I do there. Um, but again, you have to understand those concepts of custom post types, custom fields, regardless of the tool that you use. That is very important. That series does that for you. Um, but again, high level here, this is what you're doing. So you have the fields in here. You're filling this out. This is a single, you know, a single instance of a job here, civil engineering land, land development. Um, so we created the CPT, we created the fields, we added some obviously, then we created a job single, which ultimately would be this right here, right? It's just the template for the job, uh, for the job single, a single job. And again, this would be like the post title. This is outside the scope of this video, but it is important given the way that I have this set up. So job title, the type, and then we put the field in there. We, you know, the, the dynamic variable in there. We put the uh, you know, this just like text or whatever, and then the same thing. So all this stuff is generated dynamically. Again, as you can see, if we go back to careers, we scroll down, we open civil engineering, we open CAD, we look at civil engineering, we look at CAD, looks very similar, right? There can be like some dynamic conditions. We could talk more about that, but that is the singles. Okay. So we did that. We obviously created that careers page, um, where everything is here. And this is kind of where part of the magic starts to happen. Okay, everything we've talked about, pure setup. Now we're talking about form stuff. You could have all this stuff without the forms, okay? So now you have those things and your client says, hey, we want them to also be able to apply. Okay, cool. So there's, this looks, th th you don't have to set it up like this, but the, the reasoning behind this, the business sense, the flow, is that these are individual job posts, right? So you click in to learn more and you'd be presented with the job single, right? And in the job single, you have to, again, think of the, this is, a, we're always, always we're having like UX discussions within all this as, as well, right? You're a user, you potentially want this job. You're gonna read the stuff and then what's your next thing going to be? Regardless of the actual design, like kind of the flow, you're going to be like, okay, maybe I'm interested in this job. I'm gonna apply for it. And again, you could argue if this button is placed in the right point. That, that's not the exact, the exact thing we're going for here. But this button is created with a just a little dynamic tag as well. So it says apply for, and then there's a dynamic data tag in there via bricks, but you could probably do this in other builders as well that says apply for that. And that's not even 100% necessary. I'm gonna show you that button in a second. But when they click that, that is when they come over and they see CAD drafter or they see civil land you know, engineer or whatever, okay? So I'm just giving you the setup, still giving you the setup there. The last point of it is that what if somebody comes to this website and they see the positions and they don't like the positions, but you do want to take resumes, you do want to take something else that's not exactly 
uh, they don't want to apply for something specific. They want to apply for something general. Okay. Well, there's, you know, join our talent pipeline. And all that is, is a link directly to the apply page. That's all that link is. We're not even going to cover that because that's what that link is. Just coming to this apply page that we created that we put the form on and it's the general form. Okay. I will cover this real quick. Uh, if we edit the template of the job single, then you can, I'll show you how this button was created because this part is important because it's going to coincide when, as we get to the form stuff here is it's site URL. So it's whatever your site URL is, which is a nice way you could write your site URL in there, but if you use the, 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 uh, variable there, then it'll always be it regardless of if you change, you know, you move it off the dev environment or whatever slash apply because apply was the page is the page that our form is on. And then question mark job, which that, that can be whatever you want. Um, but I just put job question mark job equals. And then I did a dynamic variable for post title. So what does that mean? We have to understand that as we start to think about this other thing. The reason we put that in there is because we want this button when we're on a job single for CAD drafter. Okay. We want that link to go to the form and we want to pass over a, like a, like the query variable or URL parameter or whatever you want to call it here, this part right here. And it needs to be, you need to give it a name, which is job. And you need to say it equals something. Now you could make it equals other things, but it needs to be dynamic because it needs to know that it's coming from here. And if we say post title, then what's going to happen is if we're on that CAD drafter single page and we, you can see it now up here in the URL bar where it's apply slash job equals CAD, you know, space escape sequence drafter. Again, play with that. If you want to do it a different way, if you want to make it cleaner or whatever, but this way does like does exactly what you want. There are definitely corner cases. Let's forget about those for right now. Okay. But like at a, as a minimum viable product of this approach, boom, there you go. You could put this in a modal. If you wanted, you could change this, change it, change it up. But this is probably the simplest way to get into this. And again, take it from here. Okay. So this is a separate page and now it's CAD drafter. So as we, you know, with all that in mind, let's go back to the form. It's not just going to work because you did that. You need to take it another step further within the form because when that comes in, when that URL parameter comes in, you need a way to say, okay, this, this page now is no longer to apply for a general position. This form is no longer to apply for that. This form is to apply for a specific position in the action, in the real, in the, you know, the reality of the situation, the form doesn't really know a lot or, or really care in some ways until you actually conditionally tell it. One way to do that is when we looked at the form, you did not see this hidden field that we had in here. Okay. And this hidden field is just, it's just a text field that says apply for position right here. Right. And over here, the default value we have set to, there's all these things again. I mean, I could make a thousand videos on WS form. If you want to, if you want to see them, you have to tell me exactly what you want and I will make them, uh, leave it in the comments. But I'm giving you the, the, the way that I did this was if you go, there's a ton of like little insert variable things here. And if you scroll down here, there is a place where I believe it's query, uh, it's po it's query variable, get request right here and it's query variable. And then when you click that, it just, all it does is put this in here, right? And then you change the, um, here, I'll just put it in here real quick. So it's hashtag query underscore variable. And then in parentheses is variable. I'm going to delete it now because all I did was I changed the word, the inside the parentheses to job, whatever you named that link over there, we named it job, right? Question mark job, whatever you name that, cause you don't have to use this for job. Okay. I'm trying to give you, like, I'm trying to re remind you that you don't have to use it like this. You just name it that. Okay. So if it was careers or open position or position or something or whatever you put that in there. And then what that does is that this field now, when the page loads, okay, when the form loads on the apply page, if it's just apply, like our general form, then it's not going to put anything in the default value because there's nothing there in the query for in the in the query string in the URL for it to grab. But when it loads like this, then it knows, oh, there's a query variable up in this URL, I'm going to take that, I'm going to use that. And then it's going to be CAD, like CAD drafter is going to be the thing that it pulls into that query. And then it's going to, it's going to pull in here. Okay. And then on that part of it, okay. What it's going to know is that, okay, well, Hey, 
like that we're applying for a specific position here. So it's, it's brought it in and we're applying for CAD drafter. They're not going to see that on the actual form unless you, you know, unhide this field and everything. But what I did on my end was I went over to our page, our apply page here, and I did a little extra thing. Okay. So I came in here and this is again, just our apply page. There's a heading, there's basic text, there's a form. Okay. But this is the only part that's, that's, that's interesting in here. There are two text fields. Okay. There's one text field that says, fill out the application below to enter our talent pipeline. We'll reach out if, if relevant opens become available. That verbiage does not make any sense if it's a specific job. Okay. So I, I put that in there and I conditionally said, only show that when the URL is slash apply, it's equal to slash apply. So that is how that was created. When it's, when it's a general form, I want to show some text. That's all it is. When it doesn't, when, when there's nothing in the URL bar that, that signals to the form to, to put something in that default field, we're just going to show them this text. Okay. Similarly, but opposite, you are, there's another text uh, element down here. You are applying for URL parameter uh, job. Now this, okay, there's two pieces to this. I'll talk about the conditions first. I want this to say you're applying for whatever job you're applying for. We'll talk about that in a second because we've already mentioned it. But the conditions on this are if the current URL contains, I just put a question mark because if it doesn't contain a question mark, then it's not going to, you know, like if it contains a query basically at all, you could say like question mark job even and it would work, right? Okay, it's probably a little safer actually. So I'll just leave it at that. But if it's question mark job, then it knows that there's a query up there, right? So if it does contain that, you're going to have a query in the URL bar and you're going to be able to display it, right? So that's that. If we come in here, you're going to ask me, well, Mark, how did you get it to say CAD drafter in there? Well, Bricks is amazing as well. Okay. So URL param URL underscore parameter job, that's literally just a dynamic data thing in here. Okay. So you can, you can have like queer, uh, it's one of these here. Um, I think it is, oh, it's URL. There's a URL one in here somewhere. Or maybe this is, maybe I pulled this from something else. Don't quote me. Oh, right here. Yeah. URL parameter. Look up, uh, I'll leave a link here too. Bricks Dynamic Data, great uh, resource for understanding how every single one of those work and everything like that. But again, it's, it, I mean, it's just, it actually just makes perfect sense. Like URL parameter and then put the parameter name in there. So yeah, there you go. And then that's what it would be. And because it says CAD drafter up in the URL bar, that's why you're seeing CAD drafter written there. Or if it said civil engineer, you know, whatever, it would say that. So there you go. So again, we have a form. We have those specific things there that are conditionally shown. We have this thing, this this piece here, right? This uh, the actual position that they're applying for showing up in the form field. It's hidden, but it's showing up in the form field and it's showing up on the page via dynamic data from that knowing from that uh, URL uh, query variable. And there we go. The last the, one of the last things I'll show you here is I talked about that form or that form field that was. Uh, what is your area of expertise, right? And that area of expertise uh, field is actually conditionally shown. And it is conditionally shown if, I believe right here, show field of expertise only if, and I mean, again, I know I'm talking a lot about WS form. It is just because I genuinely love it because I've never seen any other form builder. I haven't used every other form builder, okay? But I haven't seen any other form builders that go to this level of like intricacy on this stuff. You can conditionally uh, show, hide, or like do literally almost anything to any element, not just form fields. Like it's the conditioning is crazy. So you want to show, the, the, here's the thing. You want to show that field only when, you want to only show that field when you are fielding a general application. Because think about it. Somebody is applying for CAD drafter. You don't give a shit if they're like, if they want to be administrative or in the field or what, or, or, you know, uh, something else like they already are explaining to you. They've already denoted what they want, right? Like what they want to apply for. So don't even show them that because they don't need it. So I made that field in there and then I, I made it conditionally show up. So if applying for position is blank, right? Which is our one that we pulled out of the query, the query string. If there's, if it's just, if the URL is just apply, there's going to be nothing in there. So it's going to be blank. So if that field is blank, 
then we want to set the visibility of this field down here to visible. And if it's not, it's automatically going to be hidden. And I mean, again, you can change all this, but that's that's what it is. So that is how we were able to make this form, okay, in a situation where here, this is just a general application. And I mean, you could do that with so many other fields too. Like, I mean, you could literally have the same form, the same actual application form, one form in the back end that you only have to manage like the, the what I'll call like more of the global settings of it in one place. But you could have like, you could have like five fields for general that don't show up on a specific one. You know, I was just using one example here um, because this form is not like super complex, but you could get crazy with the forms, obviously. So there's that. And then if, again, if you go over to and you want to have like CAD drafter in here, or you, you know, you're applying for a specific position, then there you go. You have, you don't have that field in there. You have this. And then the last bit of it is you're like, okay, Mark, this is all well and good. This is terrific. But here's the problem, um, or here's my question rather, is, okay, so they fill out this form. How do they know how to, like, Obviously, there's a ton of things we could talk about, like post, you know, after submit actions, right? But how do they know at the at the minimum viable product level that how do they know that when this form comes through that it's is it is it is it a general one or is it a a specific one? Well, the way that I've handled that here is if we go back over to the form and we go to actions, right? We have save submission, we have save message, we have an email to applicant, which is fine, and then we have an email notice to my client here. Now you could do whatever you want and all this sort of stuff. But specifically down here, we have email subject, email submission. That's kind of just basic. That's just default. That's just by default. What that's going to do is send an email literally with every single form field and the answer to it, right? Like the actual, you know, whatever, whatever the, whatever the input was. Now there's one thing that you would want to check down here or uncheck rather is clear hidden fields. I've unchecked that. The reason I've unchecked that is because I have a hidden field. It's going to have something in it. It's a nice feature to have. It's a nice feature to have control of. Enabling this will clear fields that were hidden when the form was submitted. Well, that field is hidden, right? This applying for position field is hidden. I don't want to clear it because if I clear it, then I'm not going to have that information come through in the email. So I don't want to clear it. And if I don't clear it, then if that, if the, if I if I don't clear it, then in the email it's going to say applying for position CAD drafter. If it was uh, if it was if there was something in there, and if there wasn't anything in there, then I would I would just not get that field because it's not going to show me fields that didn't have anything in it. So that's relatively straightforward, and you got to play with that depending on your personal situation. The last thing, though, the, the one other thing, is that in the uh, subject line too, because now you're thinking I, I could go so deep with these forms. Now you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to get like emails, right? And this is literally a client request. In the email, I want to know at a glance in the subject line whether it's general or whether it is uh, specific. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. So look at the subject line here real quick. The subject line is email application and then field 17, field 18, which again, all these are just from here, these insert things. It has all the it has all the fields in your thing. It has all the fields from your um from your form and then a bunch of other things. So it's email, uh, employee application. And then I just, I, and you can style this however you want. You could slide this out however you want, but I just did email application and then in parentheses field 17, 18. What that is is just first name and last name because you're gonna need those. Those are gonna be required, that'll be in there. So it'll be like first employee application, Mark Szymanski or whatever. And then outside of those parentheses at the end here, I have field 70. Field 70 is our apply for our applying for position like like basically our variable for that. So what that ultimately does is that if there's something in there, it's going to show it in the subject line. So if somebody applies for CAD drafter, it's going to say Mark Szymanski CAD drafter in the subject line. If somebody applies for general, there's not going to be anything in that field. So there's not going to be anything in that, in that part of the subject line. It's not going to insert anything there. I mean, again, this isn't a basic tutorial on how to do all this stuff. If you want that, you let me know. But that, if you understand those concepts, you can create like whatever you want in those in those essences. And that's really what I'm trying to do with a lot of the content that I create. So that is pretty much it. I know it wasn't a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you were looking for that, 
Again, I apologize, but that is a step-by-step -step showcase of exactly how I did all that, the power of WS form, and just what I was able to create for a client that was just like, hey, we really wanna do this, and it's like, I, I have the capability to do everything that we wanted there, and more. So if you're interested in WS form, again, link in the description, 30% off until uh, June 20th, 2024. I'm gonna make another video here. You'll, you'll see it again uh, in the description and everything like that on a different form that we did for the same project. It was also, it was cooler. Um, it was cooler in a sense of it had a lot more dynamic condition stuff going on. Uh, and I don't know, just the, the possibilities are endless. So if this is the type of stuff that you, projects that you normally get yourself into, I would highly look, in, look into WS form. Leave me a comment. Uh, I would love to answer any questions that you have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll talk to you in the next one.